you saw Ollie Debug, and Ollie Debug is real easy to use and it's very popular with reverse engineers, but it has two limitations. One is it's 32-bit only, but there are later versions like Community that, that fix that. And the other limitation is it cannot debug the kernel. So Microsoft makes the bugger WinDebug, which is much more powerful, but it's very difficult to use. And uh, I was teaching a version of this class about a year ago, and there was a Microsoft engineer in the class, and he told me they've improved WinDebug, which they have. There's a new thing called WinDebug Preview for Windows 10 only that's in the Microsoft Store, and you've got it on these machines. So let's uh, see how that works, and it's better, but it's still a lot harder to use than Ollie Debug. So uh, let me bring up the instructions here as usual, and this is... Uh, WinDebug Preview. All right, so let's start WinDebug, which the Microsoft Insiders call WindBag. All right, and I'm going to run it as administrator, although I don't think that's really necessary for what we're doing now. It won't do any harm. <coughs> All right, and let me just follow my steps here. All right, so we're going to do File launch executable and run notepad file launch executable and notepad again by the way one thing I learned is that there's a lot of different versions of notepad and they're not all the same all right so here's notepad loading up and let me get a copy of these instructions on the side here so I can refer to them while working all right all right, so uh, these are the loaded modules. There we are. Now I can go full screen. These are the loaded modules that Win that Notepad uses, and we've seen these before in uh, Debugger and the other tools we've used. Uh, Notepad.exe is just a small part of the code. It calls all these libraries. Now ntdil is the user mode face of the kernel. You remember user mode code is what runs in what's called ring three, which is low privileges from the uh, machine language level. They, those processes cannot directly touch the hardware. They have to talk to ring zero, which is kernel mode. And ntdil is the user mode land. And let me just point to this picture from 432, which is quite helpful to show you what happens. Your application is here, like your browser or Microsoft Word or something. That generally calls kernel32.dil. One fundamental rule of Microsoft naming is that everything is named the opposite of what it is. So the kernel is not the kernel. The kernel is a user land library used to access the kernel. ntdil is what's called the low-level system, uh, the native API, which normal developers are not supposed to use, only internal Microsoft developers. And it's largely undocumented, although as we're going to see, uh, you can totally see what's going on in Windows, whether they document it or not, so you can figure it out. Then you make the jump from user mode to kernel mode, and that's where the kernel is, NTOS kernel. <coughs> and there are other things in the kernel, like device drivers, unfortunately, <coughs> which is something Microsoft is very annoyed by. Um, with XP, you may remember you'd get the blue screen of death and this box would pop up saying, please tell Microsoft about this problem. So they cooked those and they found that like two-thirds of all blue screens of death are caused by non-Microsoft code in the kernel, namely device drivers, because people would take a buggy old device driver written for an earlier version of Windows and just include it in a later version and it would cause the whole thing to come down with a blue screen of death and then Microsoft would get blamed for it. So they've been more and more strict about controlling the device drivers people write and testing them for quality before they allow Windows to use them. <coughs> and it's been getting a lot better. I haven't seen a blue screen of death in years, I think. I think Microsoft has really improved their reliability that way. Anyway, so this is NTDIL. So your program is using that. Notepad uses that. Any program uses that that wants to touch the hardware. Here's the kernel32.dil. And here's other libraries it's using. All right. So it loads all those modules, and now you have Notepad. And let me get to my instructions for this one. All right. So we can see, um, open, all right, let's take a look at Process Explorer. All 
All right. And it should be running Notepad now. It'll be down in user land. This is all kernel mode stuff with the blue and the pink. And the user land stuff is down here in purple. And there's Notepad. All right. So I said view show. Let's we wanted to see the dills here. So view lower pane view should be dills. Hmm. Why am I not seeing the dills? Hmm. That's disturbing. Um, do I need? Oh, maybe because it's not running. All right, that could be it. Maybe have, anyway, because it's attached to the debugger. All right. Wonder if there's oh, if I go here, then Notepad will be running. Ah, and now Notepad appears here. And uh, still doesn't appear here. How rude. Hmm. Well, these two programs seem to conflict with each other. Wow, now nothing works. Whoa, this is rude. Uh, view. Well, let's change the view to handles. Wow, okay. That works for some things. It doesn't work for others. Well, that's interesting and new. Anyway, that's not an essential part of the project. But there are some steps here where you're supposed to look at the library in Process Explorer, and I think you're not going to be able to do them if your machine is like mine, because somehow Process Explorer doesn't let you see this stuff. Anyway, maybe if we run it as administrator. Let me just try that before I give go on to other things. Process Explorer might be if it's running as administrator. It'll be able to see inside Notepad. <clears throat> Oh, I ran the debugger as administrator. Ah, and then I launched Notepad from inside the debugger as administrator. So I've, since I ran the debugger as administrator, I think that means I have to run Process Explorer as administrator. I probably could have run them both as non-administrator. It would have been okay. That's it. Okay, so I understand what happened. Um, if, you, if one is administrator and the other is not administrator, then they can't see the process in both cases. Anyway, so I wanted to look at the dills, and there they are. All right. And uh, I wanted to look at ntdill here and see the load address. That's all I'm looking for. Um, there is ntdill. And if you go to Properties, you will see the load address is 7FF ending with F and four zeros. And that should match the number seen in here. If I can get this to go back to ntdill. Right, and I ran it. So there we are. There's what I had it, and then it moved away from it. All right. There's ntdill. It's 7FFF um, BF and four zeros. I think it's 7FF8. Let's go here. 7FF8. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's a little hard to see, but anyway, that's the point. You're just seeing the same information that you would see in Process Explorer is the only point of that. All right, so let's get back to the debugger. And I'm going to try and restart this because um, I want to get back. So let's see if there's a way to easily restart it. Uh, it's debug restart in the other one. In this one, I do not see any easy way to restart it. File. Um, I'm just going to close it and restart it. That's what I'm going to do. Because I don't see, I don't know what you use for debug restart and when debug preview. And a lot of the conveniences. So I'm going to try running it as non-administrator this time because I think the administrator privileges just made more trouble than they were worth. And now it's file, launch executable, notepad. All right. And here we go. It's loaded all the stuff, and then it hit a breakpoint, which is just what the other debuggers do. It loads it all into memory and then stops, so you can examine it. And here's the, the thread showing in that pane. And we can change what appears down there. So we can hit View and choose what to see and choose Stack. And now we get the stack down here, just like in Ollie Debug. It looks a little different, but this is it. These are the 32-bit words telling you where they go. Debugger break, uh, initialize process. These are ntdill um, things down there. All right, we're five calls deep in the stack. 
Now we can view symbols. You put commands in this bar in the middle. So I can X for examine, notepad, uh, bang, star. This will look for symbols. Notepad followed by an exclamation point and a star will show me all the symbols in notepad. So there's something called get warbird paint and uh, P key security encryption owners and so on. There's a lot of symbols. So I probably want to look at a filtered selection of them. So I can do star main star and I'll get ones that contain the word main. And there are only about eight of those. Common main, win main, win main CRT startup and so on. All right. And the entry point is win main, which I guess maybe it's this W win main. I, uh, all right. I'm just looking. It ought to be Notepad Bang Win Main. And, hmm, all right. Maybe it's the same as W Win Main, which doesn't seem right. But this might be a slightly different version of Notepad or something. Anyway, I want to make a breakpoint. I'm going to set a breakpoint at Win Main. And. I'm a little troubled that there is no win main. Let me try again for win main. Maybe the case matters. Not in Microsoft though. Let's see if it can find win main. There is none. Instead it's W win main, which troubles me. I'm going to see if the breakpoint at W win main works. If not, I'm going to have to stop and download the version of Notepad that I understand. Notepad is in fact incredibly complicated. Uh, so W win main is what we have, whatever that is. Okay, I've set a breakpoint at that location, and now I can list the breakpoints with BL, and it shows that I do have a breakpoint at Notepad W Win Main. All right, now I can run with uh, G for Go, and it runs, and it does not hit the breakpoint. Okay. Yep. So uh, let me see if I can find how to get this exact version of Notepad. Uh, they appear to have changed everything on me again. Uh, and I think it's down here at the end because students found they couldn't get the flag without getting exactly my version of Notepad. Um, maybe it's going to be 432. Well, I may just carry on, but I'm just going to see if I can find the, yeah. Um, All right. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think you'll be able to get the flag without this, but the steps aren't exactly the same. For some strange reason, there's no main in Notepad, and I don't even understand how that's possible. Uh, it has to have main to start the program, so I'm going to have to research and find out what they've done there. Anyway, um, so we can observe loaded modules. Let me just launch it. Is it still running? I closed it. Let me launch it again. File, launch executable, Notepad. <clears throat> All right, and I wanted to uh, see the loaded modules. I think I don't need to run it for this. LM will show me loaded modules, and there they are, things like kernel 32 and Notepad itself and GDI 32. Now look for ones with PDB on the right, and the only one that has it is NTDIL. The PDB file here is the symbols. The symbols include named locations, like win main and other things in the file. And if you don't have that, that's called the debugging information, then it's really hard to read code or de-analyze it because you don't have the names of the modules or the variables or anything. So um, you can load them, and we will. Um, so we can do a stack trace with K and see where you are. And you see here we are five layers deep, which is the same information shown down here. These are the addresses on the stack. And we can find API calls that create files, which are the ones that we looked at when you used API monitors. So that's x nt dil bang star create file star. And that will be nt things like z, nt create file and zw create file. There's a few of these. Um, that we've seen some of them before. Some of them are where you uh, 
got the name of the file it was created when you ran Notepad in API Monitor. And so we can set a breakpoint at ntdil zw create file here. I'm just going to copy that. Hmm, right click doesn't copy. I'll see if Control C copies. So I'm going to do a breakpoint bu and then see if Control V pastes. Oh, it does. That's handy. Okay, ntdil zw create file. That's what I wanted. Okay, it. Um, I guess it worked. Then I resume execution with go. And it hit the breakpoint. Okay, so whatever that NT create file thing is, it hits it frequently. It hit the breakpoint and stopped. All right. And here it shows you uh, the instruction it stopped at. And here it shows you the structure of the stack when it stopped. And as you can see, it's much deeper here. So at kernel 32, here's Notepad, a whole bunch of processes inside Notepad, then something called Windows Storage, then Kernel Base, then Kernel 32, Kernel Base, and finally into NTDIL to run NT create file, and then it stops. All right. And so you can do a stack trace on this one, which will just print out that same information in the other window. And if you go to the top, you'll get the thread number. This is 0, colon, 0, 0, 0. So right now, this is the only thread that's running in Notepad. Microsoft Windows applications are multi-threaded. There are multiple possible paths of execution. And the idea is if one thread is waiting for something slow, like user input, the other parts of the program can proceed. Those are the multiple threads. Notepad, this, this is the zero thread. It may be the only thread in Notepad, but it wasn't when I tried it or other threads. All right, um, the first number is the processor number, and the next number is the thread number. So this is processor number zero running thread number zero. All right, you can see all the threads with the tilde command, which is shift back tick. And there are, in fact, two threads, zero and one, in my notepad. All right. And now I can delete all the breakpoints with BL. Right. Or that lists the breakpoints, pardon me. And I can just clear them by clicking clear. There's only one breakpoint now, so I will clear it with clear. That's the GUI. You can sometimes click these buttons. All they do is execute commands here that you can learn, but you can do it anyway. So that's the basic introduction to WinDebug preview. And the other thing I want to show you is debugging the kernel, but I'm going to make that a separate video. So I'm going to stop this one.